with Book Talk. Today, we're discussing the third book in Michelle Mead's Bloodline series, The Indigo Spell. These books are just a joy, a joy to read, and I fly through them, and then it's like, separation anxiety, no! So if you haven't read any of these books, I just suggest you leave now, because we're gonna discuss it in detail, and you don't wanna be spoiled. Spoiling is sucks, I hate being spoiled. No, don't be spoiled. Okay. I am so happy for Cedrian! I'm okay, I'm fine, that was fine, I'm fine. I am so happy for them. Are you not so ecstatic? I was so giddy reading this. Oh, BT Dubs got the book in actual physical copy this time. I don't like the covers. They could do much better than this. It does not reflect the greatness that is inside. They kind of look stuck up on the cover. Adrian kind of looks way too serious to be Adrian. The opening scene really sets the tone for the book. Ripping away those stupid alchemist beliefs. Breaking the tattoo. This wasn't the first time I'd been pulled out of bed for a crucial mission. It was, however, the first time I'd been subjected to a personal line of questioning. Are you a virgin? Huh? I said, are you a virgin? And immediately we jump into a magic sesh. Sydney has to cast this crazy spell and she casts it like a boss. Sydney is a fireball throwing, building, scaling, vampire dating, tattoo breaking, crazy magician, whiskey ball owning machine. This girl, this girl, if you look at her in book one to now, she has just become this kick ass female protagonist. I remember being so frustrated about how defenseless she was in book one. Now she can kick some ass, man. This book is all about Sidrian. Sydney's mind might still be in denial, but her body, her heart, you know, it's going with it. Adrian makes a move, she's going with the move. I think most of that actually holding her back was the loyalty that's in the lily. And she says that didn't really affect their relationship when she broke it officially, but, but, no. I think, I think all those times, sending out the mixed signals. Oh, no, this is wrong. Yeah, that's the lily talking, shut it down. First we've got the airplane ride, we've got the loving from afar conversation, which was beautiful. So you're done with all that stuff? Done with feeling that way? I couldn't bring myself to elaborate. Done with being in love with me? Oh no, not at all. But you just said, yeah, I'm done pouting. Adrian, this isn't a joke! I know, it certainly is not to me and that's why I'm not gonna give you a hard time. I'll just love you whether you want me to or not. Whether I want you to or not? What on earth does that mean? Sorry, that came out creepier than I intended. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're already half in love with me. I am not! Everything you're saying is ridiculous! This is terrible logic! Then we have Project Defeat the Soul-Sucking Monster that's Miss Terring her sister but is actually Alicia, which involves Sydney and Adrian just working together at all the times. <coughs> nice thinking, Mrs. Tellringer. Nice going there. I approve. I approve of that message. Now, when I heard the word wedding, I'm immediately thinking, oh, who's getting married? Is it Rosa and Dimitri? Is it Rosa and Dimitri? Is it and Christian? Is it? Is it? I just completely forgot that Mikhail and Sonia were things that, that existed in the series. Adrian's got balls. He goes up to her and asks her to dance. Now, Sydney is with her other alchemist friends. She, she, no, she absolutely can't. We get reintroduced to Ian. Oh, he's a peach. Sometimes you gotta take one for the team. Sometimes you just gotta dance with the guy you're in love with. Oh, you can't help but love Adrian. I've been rooting for him since Vampire Academy. He's always the underdog, even here. Sydney doesn't have another love interest, but the alchemist, that's the third person in their triangle. Is she gonna pick the alchemist or is she gonna pick Adrian? Obvs, Adrian's got it in the bag. He's the Edward here. But you know, Jacob puts up a fair fight. This couple is groundbreaking in this community. The idea that a Marcus wouldn't even cross that line to have relationship with him, Roy. That just makes this all the more groundbreaking. What do you mean you wouldn't even cross that line? You're Marcus. You're the big rebel leader. Wait, Sydney, she's the queen of rebel. She's gone from this obedient little mouse to the queen of rebel. Then we've got the sorority house scene. They're painting shirts together. To my horror, he began painting a pirate skeleton riding on a motorcycle. When he started painting the pirate skeleton, just died. Then of course they have their makeout sesh PDA on the floor of the sorority man. But then of course some girl gets a soul sucked out of her and just kills the whole thing. Just someone always interrupts them. Jill! The next day, she has a hickey. She sends in this text. I have a hickey, you can't ever kiss me again. Okay, I won't kiss you on the neck again. No, you can't ever kiss me anywhere. You said you're gonna keep your distance. I'm trying, but you won't keep your distance from me. Bam, Adrian out. They're beautiful. Sidrian's beautiful. These magic lessons are getting crazy. 
crazy. I can't wait for her to be able to take on Hermione Granger. Oh, like a potion showdown. Hermione Granger versus Sydney Saint. Who will win? Who will you put your bet on? I mean, maybe Hermione. She's had seven years of official training. But still, Sydney's a prodigy of magic. They keep calling her a prodigy. So by the end of book six, I feel like she's going to be the queen of magic everything, which is queen. Adrian goes, when did you get to this point that you just read a spell and you do magic blindly? Who are you? Um, I did not expect to come out of that with joint custody of a dragon. I really, I'd like to go to pies and stuff. I, it sounded like the pie hole from Pushing Daisies. They named the dragon Hopper. Great name, guys. The dragon is kind of like a rememberal in Harry Potter. Speaking of naming, we have this thing where Sydney is gonna name Adrian's car. We're throwing around gold dust. Her car's name is Latte. At the end, to close this joke up, Adrian goes, what did you pick to name the car? Oh, I was thinking the Avishkinivnator. Avishkinivnator? Um, yeah, my car, the Avishkinivnator. It's hard enough to pronounce your name already, man. <laughs> Why would you want your car to be named after you? It's can even Ishkavanator. Fail. Fail on your part, Sydney. Then we got the Velvet Room incident. Was I the only one that thought it was ridiculously idiotic to go back to the bed and breakfast once we knew that Veronica had checked back in? They go into her room, like the room she was sleeping in, and sit on that bed all vulnerable. Meanwhile, I'm like, oh my god, she's a witch. She's a very powerful witch. She could be invisible. She could be spying from the window. She could be on the ceiling for all you guys know. And then Adrian knocks off her necklace. Oh. Sydney has to go to the headquarters and steal the footage for a certain day to prove that the Warriors of Light are in cahoots with the Alchemist. And not for a second did I think that was a conspiracy theory. It just seems like something the Alchemist would do. To accomplish this task, she has to seduce Ian. When she got back with that thumb drive in her bra, we did it, we did it. And then we have the dress. Adrian sucks her into the dream, and it was beautiful. Finally, finally. She never says I love you back to Adrian in this book, even though she tells Marcus that she's in love with someone. I understand why she hasn't, but still. He said it so many times to you that it seems rude that you have not said it back now. Now we have this new character, Marcus. He does seem like the slacker that Jill described him as. A slacker with good intentions, but a slacker nonetheless. Yeah, we're just gonna hang out in Mexico, go to Tijuana and drink, and die in alley like Misha Barton does in the OC. In this book, we really I didn't get that much of the gang. That whole Angeline situation was so obvious she was just cheating with Trey. Jill really wasn't in this book almost at all. She was like a weird Dumbledore book one figure that just came in to give advice and be wise when needed. And there's a lot of foreshadowing about mistakes. You're gonna slip up. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. I'm so afraid that that's gonna happen in the next book. And then we have that foreshadowing. Adrian's like, don't get caught. And she goes, well, at least I'll have you for company in my dreams. Oh, oh no, not cool. I'm so afraid she's gonna be sent to re-education. If that happens, they better stage a prison break immediately. No staying in the re-education center, uh-uh. No wiping her mind. So we have to do this all again. Now she's really magician -y. So she should be able to ward off alchemists trying to take her into re-education centers, right? Right, right, right. Yes, say I'm right. Then we have the final Sidrian scene. I really, really thought that this final scene would be at a bed and breakfast on the coast, like Sydney had referred to with Alicia. I thought that would just be the full circle of greatness with that joke. We go back to the dorm. The book's almost over. We got these two new characters that are joining our little group family. Now this is all a result of her calling Stanton after she broke the tattoo, which I thought was a big, big mistake. Why would you trust the alchemist with this? Jill is in trouble. It is a problem. That's gonna come to haunt us and kick us in the ass. But why would you tell the alchemist? Why would you trust them again? They let someone up in her room that said that they were her cousin. I really thought it was gonna be Alicia. How could they do that? Don't go up there, Cindy. You're gonna die. I thought we were gonna end on a cliffhanger where she opens the door and Alicia is there to suck her soul. But it's not a Cassandra Clara book, so she doesn't torture us like that. It's Zoe. My theory is that Zoe will be the end of Sydney. She will be sending her back to re-education. Zoe will see something that's not alchemist approved and tattle on her because she's the younger sister and that's what they do. She's a kiss ass daddy's girl. Then we have to break her. We have to break her in or we're gonna get in trouble. It's hard to tiptoe around a girl who lives in the same room as you. And then we've got this new, new damper, 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 damper. 
Nailed it. Neil. Neil is attractive and has blue eyes. Where is he fitting in to this romance pentagon, huh? I don't like it. My hope is that maybe Zoe will kind of grow to like him because that'll show her that they're not evil creatures of the night. She needs a relationship with one of them. She doesn't have to live with Jill like Sydney did in the beginning. That really broke her into their world. And not really their world, but broke her into the idea that they're just like her. The next book I think is called Fiery Heart, which is the heart on her shirt. I loved when she wore the shirt at the end. I really, really want to see the conversation when Rose finds out about Cydrian. I just want to see her reaction. I think she'll just be super surprised and eventually be cool with it. But I just want to see it. I think it'll be hilarious. She hasn't seen, no one has seen this growth in Sydney. Apparently Fiery Heart's gonna be told from both Sydney and Adrian's point of views, which is really exciting, but does scare me that they might be separated and that's why we have to see from both point of views. And yeah, that that's all I have in my notes. Share your favorite parts. I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm Christine. Thanks for watching. Bye! Hi. Take 50 million. <laughs> I'm not going crazy. You are. You are.